What's good, everybody? Welcome to The Underground. And if you're invested in the underground scene, or even if you're just a knowledgeable hip-hop fan, you've probably heard the name Nick Mira before. However, if you're someone who became a fan of hip-hop after 2020, I wouldn't at all be surprised if you didn't know who he was. And considering the legacy he played a pivotal role in creating, the influence he had on hip-hop in general, I mean, where is he, and why don't we hear his name anymore? Now, this was a question I saw on my YouTube feed a few weeks back from Bob Alam, and considering Nick is still one of my favorite producers of all time, I had to click on the video. Now, this entire conversation between Bob and Hello Yassine was actually super interesting. I highly recommend you all listen to it, but it was here when Yassine said something that I honestly have been thinking for the past few years. Nick Mira should be on a lot more than Dro Kenji beats. Yeah, man, I, I think he, that he's just not giving his beats to... Like, the internet money producer that's working with, like, everybody is Cody. I think Bob's exactly right here as well. Cody, a fellow internet money producer, has been working with considerably more well-known artists than Nick has in the past three years, especially when we're talking underground. So, why is this? Why? 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 To help answer this question, I want to take a step back and take a look at Nick's come up as a producer. According to Wikipedia, the most reliable of internet sources, Nick came into contact with producers Taz Taylor and DT, who used to be side pieced through Twitch Stream way back in 2016. All three of these guys would relate in their method of selling and promoting their beats through YouTube and SoundCloud, and together would join forces to create what is now Internet Money, an extremely successful producer collective and record label in the hip hop space. In that same year, Nick Mira would also connect with Juice World through DT, and by 2017, the pair were pumping out tracks on SoundCloud. In 2017, Nick would get his first major placement with Fuck Love by X and Trippy Red, which to this day is the most streamed song on SoundCloud ever, and I'll say it again, that was his first ever major placement. It's the most streamed song on SoundCloud. That's a pretty fucking big achievement. But moving on, by the end of 2017, Juice World's Nick Mira produced All Girls Are The Same and Lucid Dreams were already starting to pick up some steam, and then 2018, the year shit got crazy. In February, Cole Bennett would drop the music video for All Girls Are The Same to critical acclaim, lending Juice World a $3 million deal with Lil Bibby's Grade A Productions, Lucid Dreams would get its own lyrical lemonade video that May, and Juice's debut full-length album Goodbye and Good Riddance, an incredible project by the way, would release that same month, with 9 of the project's 15 songs being produced by Nick Mira, at this point securing Nick as a legend in the producer space. In March of 2019, Nick would produce 4 songs on Juice's sophomore commercial project Death Race for Love, which would sell 165,000 copies first week, though he estimated that at the time, him and Juice had over 100 unreleased tracks together. 2019 would be a big year for Nick, as he would produce Ransom by Lil Tecca, as well as five of the songs on the We Love You Tecca mixtape, as well as On the Road by Post Malone, featuring Meek Mill and Lil Baby. I could just keep going here, rattling off Nick Mira placements from 2019, but I think you guys get the idea. 2020 rolls around, and Nick would produce a variety of songs on Juice's posthumous Legends Never Die, as well as Smile, featuring The Weeknd along with Co. That summer, Internet Money would drop their Nick Mira produced song Lemonade featuring Gunna, Don Tolliver, and Nav, another platinum hit under Nick's belt. Later that year, we'd get the collaborative Internet Money album Before the Storm, where Nick would produce 10 songs. The project would go number one on the Billboard 200, but was generally deemed mid, and that's it. We've seen a sporadic mainstream placement from Nick on the occasion since 2020, but as Yassine said, Nick Mira should be on a lot more than Dro Kenji beats. And let me say, I'm not trying to just hop on the hate on Joe Kenji wagon here. I'm just saying that considering how successful of a producer Nick has been, I'm just surprised that I really don't hear his name that much these days. But I got two main theories that I want to go over here, and by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're enjoying the content, please beat the absolute fuck out of that subscribe button because all I care about is the numbers. Alright, that was a joke, but either way, let's get into theory numero. Now this theory actually gets discussed by Bob and Yassine in Bob's video, but it was interesting and I figured why not talk about it on my channel. I'll give my opinion and see what y'all think, but theory number one, internet money is holding back Nick. I can definitely see this being a possibility as Taz Taylor really is the CEO and the leader of internet money and I think he's above Nick even though Nick is one of the founders. And I know a big part of internet money is building up their own artists and helping them achieve success rather than just trying to get as many beat placements as possible 
possible. Good examples are Juice World, Ian Dior, even Dro Kenji today. Now, what I do think is worth mentioning is that Dro Kenji's been signed the internet money for I think over two years now, and while he has been generally successful for them, he hasn't been as successful as a Juice World, a Lil Tecca, an Ian Dior, anything like that. Just from a business standpoint, and considering that Taz Taylor is a very business savvy guy, it just wouldn't make sense to limit Nick to only working with internet money artists as, and I can't say anything for sure, but if I had to guess, the bigger money is probably in the bigger mainstream placements, unless they find themselves another Ian Dior or another Juice World, which at this point, and I'm sorry to say it, Dro Kenji is not looking like that artist. But that's it for the first theory, I think it is somewhat feasible, but that's why I did create a theory. Now the second theory is speculation, I don't know Nick, I don't know anyone in internet money, I'm not even going to try DMing them because I know that they're not going to respond, but theory number two, Nick's just doing what makes him happy. Now shocker, Nick is passionate about making music, he does genuinely enjoy the process. You can actually go on the Nick's YouTube channel to find recent videos of him just jamming out making beats in his house, and when you look back and consider just how successful Nick's career has been so far, you'll realize that if he wanted to, he probably doesn't have to work another day in his life and he might just be tired of the producer grind and working to always get placements. And maybe he's just happy working with mostly smaller artists and just getting the occasional mainstream placement to pay the bills. However, as I said, I don't know Nick personally, this is all speculation. So I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of my theories in the comment down below. Is internet money really holding back Nick and holding him in a cage and only feeding him bread and water? Or is bro just kicking it and just enjoying life? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe to those notifications on so you guys know when I'm live streaming. We're also absurdly close to 2,000 subs, so seriously, thank you all so much for the support. Take it easy, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.